Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can become a millionaire trading options with this strategy. If you're new here and you're looking to build your wealth through stock market investing, day trading, or options trading, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. The strategy I'm sharing today is gonna to be allowing us to potentially achieve around 48 to 60% returns per year trading options. And it's going to be involving selling puts and selling cover calls. So let's dive right into the strategy. The strategy I'm sharing today is a three part process. And the first step is to sell puts on a bullish stock you want to own for a lower price. You want to choose bi-weekly or monthly expirations. And this is how you can achieve one to 4%, sometimes even higher returns per month. Now, what this looks like is let's say you wanted to own Tesla stock. You like Tesla stock, it's bullish, it's going up higher and you want to own it at about 780 instead of 800. What you're gonna do is have all of your money in cash to start. Let's say you have $80,000. And if you have $80,000, you're gonna sell a put on Tesla for the 780 strike, let's say, because you see Tesla's increasing. You sell this put two weeks out or one month out to return one to 4% from this, and you're gonna keep selling the puts until it actually gets exercised and it falls towards the stock. Because again, you like the stock, you believe it, it's gonna increase in the long run, and you wanna sell a put if it dips, so that way it gets exercised and continues to move higher. That's the thought process with the first step. We look at the options chain that expires in two weeks. We scroll down to the puts expiring two weeks. We look at the 780 strike and we re receive $25.40 per contract. That works out to be a 3% return. So you can see there's a high put bias on the stock. 3% for two weeks. So this is even higher than what I am proposing in the spreadsheet. And if you take a look at a strike that expires in one month, then we go down to the puts and we look at the 780 strike. We're gonna see we receive more of about a 5% return for one month. So as you see, I said monthly expirations are one to 4% returns. Again, it could be a little bit higher. While you're selling puts, you might not get exercised and that's okay. If you don't, you keep selling it on the stock you wanna own if you remain that bullish sentiment. Because if you do get exercised, then you're gonna get assigned and sell cover calls five to 10% above the cost basis. And again, keep choosing the bi-weekly or monthly expirations for another half percent to 1% returns per month. You, you might not receive as much on uncovered calls. Let's assume we got assigned at the 780 strike and we're choosing strikes now for covered calls that are about five to 10% above that cost basis. To make the comparison the same, we're gonna have to look at strikes that are five to 10% above the current stock price to see how much money we would get. So let's take a look at one month out on the call side. We're currently trading at 805, so 10% above that for one month expiration would be around 885, 890. So let's look at the 890 strike. We can see we would get just over 1%. What happened is if Tesla actually closes above there, not only did you get the 1% for selling the call, you actually got the 10% increase on the whole position. You get the 1% return for the month on top of the 10% because it actually closed above cost basis. So that's an 11% month while you actually achieved 5% returns for selling the puts that expired in one month. If this all happened in two months, you sold the puts in one month, got exercised, and then it actually ran up 10%. You would collect 5% plus 10% for the increase from 805 to 890 plus 1% for the covered calls. You're looking at a total of about 16% returns in the span of two months. Now this isn't always going to happen. What's more likely is you go one, two months before getting exercised you get exercised and then you go one, two, maybe three months before actually getting exercised on the sell. Now the third step that we didn't discuss is once you are selling the puts on the stock you wanna own, you actually wanna be also using leverage, one-to-one -one leverage, and I'm, I don't advise using leverage. Again, this is just a strategy I'm talking about that could potentially make someone a millionaire, but I'm not saying you should go ahead and use this strategy. I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not telling you to do any of these things. I'm just sharing all these things for entertainment purposes only but what someone could do is use one-to-one -one leverage so again if you have that eighty thousand dollar account you're selling the puts on tesla you use another eighty thousand dollars worth of buying power to sell more puts this is done while not letting yourself get assigned on these puts because again you would take on margin if you did this so we don't want to take on any margin whatsoever we would just we just want to use the buying power to sell more puts to increase our income and our rate of return while managing the positions to ensure 
we do not get assigned. Again, I wanna make that one clear. On the leverage, we do not get assigned, but on our actual capital that we have, we are okay with getting assigned because it's on a bullish stock that we wanna own for a lower price and run the wheel. That's what this is called. Step one and step two is running the wheel, sell puts till you get assigned, then sell cover calls five to 10% above cost basis until that gets assigned as well and you get your shares sold. With using one-to-one -one leverage, you're gonna choose strikes that are farther away because we wanna be safer and not let this get exercised. So these returns can be closer to one to 2% a month, but again, still as high as 4% returns per month. This is how we total the average of four to 5% returns per month after factoring in some losses that we would take when we're doing the leverage. Like I talked about plenty of times in the previous videos, I personally use the leverage to sell puts and I might take a loss one in 10 or two in 10 positions because I'm closing it out before it actually gets exercised. Whereas most of them expire worthless because you're choosing strikes that are five, 10, 20% below the current stock price. And we're using the charts to show us that there's strong support in certain areas and it's unlikely for the stock to actually reach that level by expiration. Now, if you're starting with a $20,000 account size, after 10 years, averaging that 50% rate of return, without contributing any more money, this account could grow to over $1 million starting at 20,000. This is where the millionaire maker options trading term comes from because if you start with 20,000 after 10 years, while running this wheel using the strategy, 50% returns a year is possible and achievable. And it's not likely for everyone, but this is what can happen in 10 years, starting with a $20,000 account size. If we take a look at the charts and we use probabilities to keep running the wheel, while using one-to-one -one leverage and managing the leverage appropriately. We can take a look at other stocks. Let's say we don't have 80,000 to put into Tesla. or well, maybe we're playing Bitcoin because we think Bitcoin is gonna keep running over the coming months. If we're bullish on it in the coming months, then we can look at Mara and Riot. Mara seems to have more strength and correlation to Bitcoin than Riot is having lately. So we can take a look at Riot and run the wheel on Riot or GBTC. So if you see Mara on the weekly chart, it's looking bullish. We're using Heikinashi candles. It looks like we want to keep running towards all back towards all time highs if Bitcoin decides to do the same. Bitcoin is correcting a little bit as we just had this huge run, correcting down towards the Fib level of 23 or 38. So we could see Bitcoin fall to around 53,600 or as low as about 51,000 and continue to rotate higher. If we believe that Mara is going to continue to have that correlation to Bitcoin, then we could sell puts. Mara is at $40.86, it's gonna open around $40. So we could sell puts on Mara around that 23% level or the 38% level. Let's say we use the 38% level and we sell puts on Mara expiring in two weeks at 38.50. We would pull up the Mara options chain. We change the expiration to two weeks, October 29th. Looking at Mara at the 38 strike or 39 strike, you could see at the 39 strike, you're collecting 6% returns for two weeks. And this is on the portion, let's say you want to get exercised. You want this because you believe that this is just a short-term pullback on an even greater uptrend. So if you played this, you would collect 6% expiring in two weeks. You would hope that gets exercised because you believe that Mara's just taking a dip and it's gonna continue to rip higher. Let's say in two weeks this got exercised, well then you would look to play a call, covered call, about 10% above. So 10% above that 39 would be bringing us to about 43, $44. And you could sell cover calls, let's say you choose 44, and you'd be collecting another 4% on the upside while the stock actually goes up 10%. So that's just another example, and this, these are all two week expirations. So you would, in two weeks, you'd be collecting 6% once it gets exercised. If it does indeed do what we think it would do, it would come back up to a 10% return for another two weeks, you're collecting the 5% return on the upside combined with the 6% return we got previously and the 10% stock appreciation over the span of one month. In that span of one month, that totals 10% plus 6% plus 5%. You're looking at 21% returns on this Mara trade with the portion that we want to get exercised. And that's what running the wheel looks like. So 21% returns for one month. While again, you could also use a leverage on a different stock because you don't wanna be fully concentrated in the same stock. It's just higher risk. So you could end up using a portion for 
Bitcoin and then a portion for the EV sector. Bitcoin sector is heating up and the EV sector is heating up. So you could look at those two sectors because they're bullish and sell puts, run the wheel on the Bitcoin sector or on the EV sector to get exercised and then use the one-to-one -one leverage on the portion you don't wanna get exercised and choose put strikes that are even farther away to keep getting that one to 4% return a month to use that fuel to push the returns higher. This is the whole millionaire maker strategy. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below of how this works. Let me know if you have any questions about scenarios or particular stocks to use. Thanks so much for watching. Give this a thumbs up if you appreciate it. My goal is to share some strategies to help you grow your account to achieve financial freedom using stocks, options, and day trading strategies. I appreciate you for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you in the next video.